Hello beautiful souls and welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. My name is Kelsey and today we have a beautiful collaboration pick a card reading with the amazing Asha from Through Alchemy Tarot and I'm super excited uh, to be able to uh, work with her and connect with you guys. Uh, she is an absolutely amazing reader and I will have her link to her video in the description box below. I am doing a pick a card reading to look at your current strengths and psychic abilities and she is looking at your current spiritual awakening. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in, you guys. I'm super, super excited. Out in front of you, we have three different piles to choose from or three different stones uh, to choose from. And we are looking at your current strengths and psychic abilities. So go ahead, take a couple deep breaths, really ground yourself, connect to your intuition, connect to your guides, and ask which one of these three piles is holding the messages that you need to hear in regards to your current strengths and psychic abilities and I will have the timestamps to the beginning of each reading in the description box below um, along with the link to my website to book a personal reading for anybody who may be interested in that as well but here we have pile number one with the bloodstone red jasper heart we have pile number two with the smoky quartz egg. And we have pile number three with the dream sickle quartz here. So go ahead, take your time. Pause the video if you need a moment to choose or to meditate on these cards. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to group number one. Hello, my beautiful group number one. Those of you that chose card number one here with the Bloodstone Jasper Heart, this reading is for you. Um, and we're looking at your current strengths and current psychic abilities. So I do want to say, starting off here, group number one, there is something here about the strength of your heart, um, as well as like this forgiveness coming through here. So I do feel like group number one, your guides, your ancestors. Maybe even somebody that you knew um, that has passed on are sending you a message in regards to your heart, your heart space um, and forgiveness, compassion uh, and moving forward with love. Interesting. So let's go ahead, group number one, and get into your reading. We're going to take a look here at uh, the overall energy of your current strengths and psychic abilities, and then we'll shuffle the tarot as we go. So group number one, we have here mediumship. Okay. So group number one, you guys definitely have a very strong connection to the spirit realm. You have a very strong connection to your ancestors. You may feel very called to ancestor readings, to ancestor work. Um, and some of you guys may even connect to this through like, you may, I'm, I'm really picking up on like fall on Samhain or Halloween or like that time of year being very powerful for you as well. So you may really resonate with the seasons or with like um, earth magic that's coming through here quite strongly for you as well. But with mediumship, I do feel group number one that you guys do have a very strong connection to the spirit realm and a very strong ability to communicate, connect, and channel messages, even if you don't realize that you're doing that. Um, some of you guys may really even kind of resonate with like the idea of just having like just knowing um, or you may even for some of you guys kind of connect to it with the perception of it being like your intuition 
but I do really feel like you guys connect to the spiritual realm quite often, like very frequently. Um, you may have dreams of ancestors, of passed on loved ones, or even past life kind of energies coming in here for you as well that you may connect to. Interesting. So um, we have this mediumship energy. I do feel like you guys are very able, capable, and, and do very frequently, even if you don't realize it, connect to the spiritual realm and channel messages. Um, I'm also picking up on like psychometry, I believe is the name of it, where you like can touch an object and be able to feel the energy of the owner or be able to know like whose it was or where this object came from. That's something that's coming through here quite strongly as well for group number one. So let's go ahead and shuffle out some more cards here and see what else your guides want to talk to you about in regards to your current strength and abilities here with this mediumship. I feel like group number one, you guys, there's, it, it feels like untapped potential. There's something here where it's like your guides are really pushing you to really work on growing your skills your abilities which may be part of what led you to this reading in the first place but there is a strong essence of like for some of you guys too you may just have your abilities kind of shut down um interesting so let's pull some cards here group number one and see what do we have we have the nine of earth coming out in reverse, the goddess, wow, and the six of water. So group number one here, I feel like there is a message here trying to tell you that um, for one, I'm not even sure how to, I feel like group number one, a lot of you guys are trying to find yourself and you may be feeling like you have to find yourself before you can do something. And in order to be able to find yourself you have to do something first um so for a lot of you guys there's some sort of like expression that's trying to come out and I feel like your gifts are trying to lead you towards that expression but for a lot of you guys you may be stuck in the past or in the fear of the future the the regret of the past or fear of the future I feel like is coming in here group number one very strongly kind of causing the sense of paralyzation, like not being able to move, not being able to make a deci decision, not being able to get your feet on solid ground, um, not being able to feel solid or safe even. For some of you guys, you may be struggling with survival energy or f like very fight or flight energy here. And a big part of it has to do with your mental body always being in the past or always being in the future. Some of you guys may also be kind of stuck in this fear of the unknown, this fear of death, this fear of change. But the only place that you're going to find yourself is here, is in the here and now, group number one, in the present moment, and, and working on grounding, working on connecting to the earth, working on connecting to the cycles of this earth um, I feel like could be very beneficial for you and really help you find like a more authentic version of self instead of remembering who you used to be or who you're going to be um, in different stages of your life. Interesting. I do feel like there's like a new version of yourself trying to be birthed here and you're like maybe in this gestation period. Um, group number one. Um, and I feel like this new version of yourself is going to be much more creative, much more expressive, 
um, and and leaning into those parts of yourself is going to help you kind of recreate yourself simultaneously but as far as your psychic abilities and your strengths go here I feel like I feel like there's some sort of blockage here in regards to your abilities group number one and I feel like this blockage has a lot to do with your mind constantly traveling to different places um to the past or to the future or to the what ifs or you know to the I wish I could change this or if this would have just happened differently or if I could have done things differently type energy coming in here very strongly and your guides are really wanting you to kind of look at this energy and recognize how it's holding you back how it's keeping you from experiencing life So I do feel like a big strength and a big kind of power for you, group number one, is the ability to recreate yourself over and over again through this life, to evolve, to transform, to change. And you're being called to go through a transformation right now, and there's some subconscious kind of resistance or hesitation to it, which is completely 100% natural, group number one. We all have those reservations. We all have that hesitation. We all have those what what if I'm wrong thoughts or, um, you know, have a hard time maybe stepping out of a cycle for some of us um, because I, I kind of feel like that's what's happening here is you're breaking some cycles. Um, group number one, I feel like a big strength of yours is breaking ancestral cycles, um, which is part of the reason potentially why you're so connected to your ancestors spiritually um, because they are helping guide you to break these generational cycles and I feel like you're kind of on the edge of that cycle breaking season in your life right now let's pull some more cards group number one we have the four of air coming out in reverse the maiden of fire so with the four of air coming out here this is again really kind of solidifying the the thought patterns um so it's it's like these thought patterns that you've been stuck in are really blocking almost like your third eye or your crown chakra right now group number one and that's really going to help you kind of evolve and, and become this new version of self that's trying to emerge. And we have the eight of air coming out and we look at this, we have this kind of lotus energy here and she's in this lotus energy here. which talks about, you know, rising up. It talks about purification. It talks about coming out of the darkness. It talks about the long road that it takes to get to, you know, the surface of the water. It talks about rebirth. And I feel like you guys, like I said earlier, in this gestation period, and maybe feeling kind of trapped, So I feel like your guides are really wanting to talk to you about like your your mental body group number one because your strengths reside in your mental body, in your third eye and crown chakra, especially with this mediumship energy and the spiritual communication energy. Um, but if you're constantly thinking about other things your mind is constantly traveling to the past or to the what ifs or to the fear you're not able to connect to spirit and so there's like there's thought patterns and and mental cycles and habits that are hindering your ability to receive the guidance that's trying to come in right now 
So there is a big message here, group number one, to really work on grounding and work on being present in your life. Work on being in the now instead of going into that autopilot mode and allowing your mind to wander wherever it wants to go. Interesting. But I do really see here, you know, your your mediumship abilities, your ability to connect to spirit and to your ancestors is so incredibly strong, group number one. As well as your ability to read objects, like the energy and objects coming in here very strongly. And I do feel like you guys have a very strong strength of heart, um, your compassion, your empathy, your capacity for other people's emotions. You guys may resonate with being like a safe space. I do also really feel here that a healing with the mother or a mother figure will really be a cataclyst for you guys. So this may be something that you're currently working on or working towards for some of you guys. Um, but I do see if you're not currently going through it, um, then in your, your near future, there is kind of like this healing or this forgiveness or this emotional release in regards to a mother or guardian figure. Interesting. I do feel like there's a lot of signs, a lot of synchronicities, a lot of messages coming through in the physical world or through your physical senses from your ancestors that you guys may be missing because you're in this autopilot mode and your mind is somewhere else. So you're not seeing what's kind of in front of you. Group number one. Um, and that may be kind of how this blockage is coming through as well. Let's go ahead and pull another card here, group number one, and take a look at where your guides want you to focus in regards to your strengths and your abilities here. There's two that want to come out, so we'll take them both. Um, our first one here is... The sacral chakra with money, finances, power, generosity, and abundance. Uh, so I feel like group number one, your guides here are saying that there is a need to I, I feel like there's like a fear of lack here that you guys may be kind of struggling with, which kind of connects back to that that mental body as well. Um for some of you guys it could come through as a fear of success or um, you may really find that you have a hard time kind of accomplishing certain financial goals. It's going to come through differently for everybody because this is a general reading, but I feel like really connecting to the present moment, especially when you're shopping or, um, anything like that can really help you if you find yourself, um, you know, getting bored and picking up your phone and scrolling through Etsy or Amazon as a way to pass time and you end up buying things mindlessly that you don't necessarily need. Um, I, I feel like this could be definitely something that you guys can, can recognize. I feel like this is what your guys are saying. Your guides are saying here is that this is an area that you're going to be able to see certain patterns with. Um, when you go into autopilot or when you leave the present moment, you maybe tend to spend money that you don't need to spend or even for some of you guys if you're shopping and you see something like oh I always wanted this as a kid you might end up buying it impulsively. Um, there's something here about that that your guides are wanting you to really kind of harness and, and stabilize. Interesting. And then we also have the family coming through with the root chakra, belonging, community, culture, and tribe. So yeah, your ancestors, your community, your guardians, your parents, um, but very strong connection to that energy. I feel like there's something here where it's like there's really, 
again, that survival, that survival mode, being stuck in survival energy is very, very strong for group number one. And I feel like that's super important for you to kind of work on recognizing where that's coming from. And for a lot of you guys, it the root of that stems from your childhood home. Um, and this may also be like connected to this money energy here, right? So there's some sort of cycle presenting itself that has to do with the way you utilize your, your money, your finances, your resources, maybe even your time. That's directly connected to your home, your, your childhood home. I feel specifically a lot of subconscious patterns and like thought patterns, the way you think about money, the way you view money, the perception of resources and energy being very, very prominent here for group number one, which is very interesting. So I do feel like overall group number one, you guys are currently amidst this breaking of generational cycles in regards to finances, like breaking cycles of poverty potentially for some of you guys or a poverty mindset. Um, wow. So yeah, really working on being very present, working on being very grounded um, is going to be super powerful for you, group number one, with this root chakra energy. And your creative expression is really going to help you, like, learning how to invest into the things that are authentic to you versus the things that you feel like you might need one day or that you feel like you should have had when you were a kid or however that might come through for you. It's going to be a little bit different for all of you, but... That is what I'm seeing here. And then your psychic abilities, I feel like meditation and really working on, again, like the mindset of being present is going to help you also connect spiritually. I feel like group number one, a lot of you guys may really be struggling with connecting spiritually right now. And the I feel like the strongest place that you're going to be able to connect right now is with your ancestors as you go through this time of breaking these generational cycles. Um... And I really see you guys coming to a space where you're able to claim your roots, um, where you're able to be like, this is my family, this is where I come from, this is who I am, without feeling shame or guilt or whatever it is that might come through with that. Some of you guys, there may be like a reclaiming of a family name coming in here as well. So for a lot of you guys with this mediumship ability, um, there's also like simultaneously in this physical realm, in this physical life, like a reconnecting to your bloodline, whether that be physically or metaphorically, it's going to be different for everybody again as this is a general reading. Um, but I do see that coming through here for you guys. But this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number one. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this reading. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. And consider subscribing if you feel called to do so so you don't miss out when I post future videos like this. And of course, definitely go check out Esha's channel for her pick a card reading all about your current spiritual awakening. Uh, I thank you guys so very much for joining me here today and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hello, my beautiful group number two. Those of you that chose card number two with the smoky quartz egg here, this reading is for you. And we are looking at your current strengths and psychic abilities and what messages your guides have in regards to those aspects of yourself right now, okay? So I do want to say, starting off group number two, that there is like this very strong sense of shadow work or like almost like a, a sense of being like a shadow warrior type energy or somebody who really helps heal the shadow of the collective um, and, and helps kind of raise the vibration of 
of the collective as well. Um, some of you guys may work with individuals um, like one-on-one -on -one in like therapy or um, life coach or um, some sort of interaction where you help people kind of find their true self or see the reality of their their life or their actions or their behaviors or like help people see their shadows in a way that's productive and healing so some of you guys may resonate with being healers but i'm really feeling like <laughs> the the phrase spiritual warrior that's what I'm feeling here. Group number two. Interesting. Let's go ahead and get into your reading. We're going to take a look here at the overall energy of your strengths and psychic abilities, and then we'll shuffle your tarot out as we go. So group number two, we have, we have higher self for you. I feel like group number two, something I immediately got with this card is like this sense of your higher self being a spirit guide for other souls. Um, but I'm really seeing here, like, you being this person who, like, reaches your hand out and helps people lift themselves up. You help people come out of the darkness. You help people heal their shadow. You help people ascend. You may even be somebody who is kind of a catalyst for healing or for shadow work, or you may really cause a lot of like awakening or activations within other souls, um, even just being present around them. Wow. I also feel like group number two, a uh, big strength of yours is your ability to see like the bigger picture or to have like a, a bigger perspective or uh, to be able to zoom out um, to see the bigger picture. Wow. All right, group number two, let's go ahead and shuffle out some tarot and take a look. Um, at the messages that your guides have in regards to these strengths and these abilities that you have here. Group number two, please. We have initiation coming out. We have the five of fire. Okay, um, so group number two, something that I'm really picking up on here quite strongly is that your guides, um, your job isn't to change other people, okay? Um, when you fall into this mindset of needing to change other people or needing to help other people change, you then project your own judgment of what they should be onto them and expect them to embrace that. And I feel like there's a little bit of conflict, a little bit of tension occurring within your life or within your abilities because of this right now, group number two. You may be, be, you may be being shown um, maybe your own judgmental tendencies right now, or you may be becoming much more aware of them right now. Um, that's something that your guys really want you to know. Like, it's not your job to change people. You may be that lightning strike here. You may be kind of that tower energy. You may be a cataclyst for awakening, for enlightenment, for healing for other people but your job is not to convince other people to change or to make other people feel like they aren't good enough interesting we also have the crone of air coming out here So 
so you guys definitely have like this sense of higher knowledge this sense of a bigger understanding of the world and of spirit really than than I would say most people do and I feel like you guys may be currently in a situation even or have experienced a situation in the past where it's like I know what can help you and I know how you can do better I know that you can be better or that you can feel better or that you can you know accomplish the things you want to accomplish if you just listen to me um, and you may be really struggling with the fact that there's so much potential in the world there's so much potential in other people and you may be realizing that there are certain people that just don't want to tap into that potential um, and that may be very like baffling to you very very much so something that you have a hard time comprehending or understanding or even accepting for some of you And I, I almost feel like your guides are coming through here saying that that is a lesson for you right now to learn how to kind of be that space, to hold that space, to hold your energy in a way where you are extending a hand, where you are extending an offering of help or of healing without maybe forcing it um as well as i feel like for some of you guys with this five of fire coming through here there's this energy of like i said this is again giving me the spiritual warrior energy very strongly for you guys and i feel like you guys are currently in this space of learning how to sit and hold your power instead of charging into situations that you feel need to be healed or addressed or cataclyzed. Um, allowing others or people or situations to come to you for that initiation, for that raising of vibration, for that healing, instead of asserting yourself into a situation or approaching another person, um, to try to heal them. We also have Mayban coming out here. And again, we have this element of light and dark. This, and even like we have here in initiation, we have these two beings reaching their hands out. Here in Mayban, we have these two beings reaching their hands together. Here in this higher self card, we have this extending of hands reaching out towards each other. And I feel like that's very significant for you. Um, interesting so i feel like your hands hold a lot of power group number two you guys may even resonate with being like energy healers you may be interested or currently utilizing like reiki healing even here on this crone of air with her hand on this book seems very significant interesting You guys just have this ability to lift people out of darkness. To help people come out of their own darkness. To help people heal their shadow. We have the three of water. water coming out here so 
So I feel like I feel for a lot of my group number twos, you feel like this is something you have to do alone. Um, you may feel alone for some of you guys, or you may feel like you've outgrown a lot of the people around you. And for a lot of you guys, this may be very true. You may be outgrowing a lot of people around you and they may, may be causing a lot of conflict within yourself, a, a lot of hesitation or a lot of like thoughts of, well, do I just go back to the way that things used to be so that I don't have to let go of, you know, certain people or certain energies, certain environments. Um, and for some of you guys, you may feel like you are very misunderstood. You may feel like a lot of people don't understand you. Um, other people may be intimidated by your energy because you guys have big energy. You, you have loud energy. Even if you are a very gentle, soft-spoken, easygoing person, your energy is big and your energy is loud and your energy... I feel like changes people, like your presence changes, changes people on like a molecular level. It causes initiation. It causes like the, it, 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 your energy is this cataclyst. Um, interesting. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, if this is something that's really resonating with you, you may be being called to... create some sort of business based off of this so that you can allow people to come in and receive your energy if they want to. I feel like you guys would be very, very strong business people. I feel like that could definitely be one of your strengths because you have the ability to see people's patterns and the things that people need. Um, interesting. Persephone may be a goddess that you feel very drawn to right now. Or even just studying her may bring some enlightenment to you, group number two. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to pull a couple more cards here and see what else your guides want you to know in regards to your strengths and your abilities here. But group number two, something I'm really picking up on here is these elephants in the background. I, f elephants may act as kind of like an animal guide for you, um, and that may be something to tune into for some of you guys if that resonates with you or looking up like the spiritual meaning or energies of an elephant. But there's also a very strong, almost soul contract type energy coming in here for group number too. And I feel like you guys, like, initiate people into soul contracts um, or help people complete soul contracts. Maybe even help people complete, like, karmic cycles in some way, shape, or form. You help people evolve on a soul level, I feel. Wow. So let's pull a couple more cards here. We have insight, understanding, awakening, awareness, and self-evaluation. You guys definitely have this energy about you that just this awakening, this awareness, this understanding. And again, you may really feel like a lot of people don't understand you. Um, a lot of people are not on the same level as you. 
And I feel like a big part of this has to do with this interaction between your higher self and your shadow self and the ability to embody both parts of that or all aspects of self, your past self, your future self, your higher self, your shadow self, your divine feminine, your divine masculine. Wow. I also feel like meditation may be something that's super powerful for you right now, group number two. Your ability to zoom out, your ability to see a bigger perspective, your ability, your insight, your knowledge, your wisdom is uncanny, group number two. Especially in regards to the shadow self and the higher self. Like, your ability to navigate those energies and your ability to see the truth of what it is. Your ability to see your own shadow and to navigate those energies and elevate your vibration is truly something very special group number two we also have possessions belongings finances assets and treasures with the root chakra i do feel like for a lot of you guys you're really meant to put some sort of solid like solidify this into this physical world in some way shape or form um making a business or allowing people to invest into their own healing like allowing people to pay for your services if this is something you've been kind of contemplating this is your message from spirit saying do it um For sure. And I feel like, again, like allowing people to come to you. To seek these services is a big message for you, group number two. Like opening the door and allowing people to come to you as well as allowing yourself to receive reciprocation for this healing but I feel like that's something very significant here is allowing ones who need or are seeking this energy to seek it out versus going out and searching for people that need healing interesting I'm not sure why that's so significant but that is coming through here quite significantly for you guys we have third eye and root chakra energies coming forth um, for group number two being very significant working with those energies can bring you a lot of power a lot of sig a lot of significant messages but this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number two. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this reading. Let me know what other readings you guys would like to see. Uh, consider subscribing if you feel called to do so so you don't miss out when I post future videos like this. And definitely don't forget to go check out Esha's reading over at Through Alchemy Tarot where she's going to be talking to you guys all about your current spiritual awakening. I thank you guys so very much for joining me here today and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hello, my beautiful group number three. Those of you that chose card number three here with the Dreamsicle Lumerian Quartz, this reading is for you, and we are looking at your current strengths and psychic abilities. Um, in group number three, very strong kind of starseed energy coming through here. Um, so a lot of you guys may really resonate with that, um, as well as almost like astrology. Uh, a lot of you guys here may really resonate with astrological energies, um, or even like lunar cycle energies. 
uh, zodiac horoscopes, things like that, may be really where you find the messages that you resonate with. Um, and for some of you guys, you know, your strengths or your your psychic abilities may really be rooted in the stars and in astrology and studying astrology may be something that you do or something that you would be very, very good in, okay? So like reading the stars is something that's coming through here quite strongly for group number three. And a lot of you guys may really feel like your, your home is in the stars. Um, you may not feel at home in this world at all. And that can come through differently for everybody here. Um, as this is a general reading, that can come through feeling very, you know, misunderstood, feeling like the black sheep, feeling homesick, um, just this constant feeling of like being homesick or like you don't belong here, you know? Let's go ahead, group number three, and get into your reading and take a look at your current strengths and psychic abilities. Uh, we're going to start here with the overall energy of these aspects and then we'll shuffle your tarot out as we go and go a little deeper into the messages that your guides have in regards to these. Okay, group number three. So starting off here, we have divination so yeah definitely like astrological predictions is something that i'm picking up on for group number three that may be something that you are very skilled in um you know my tarot readers may also have chosen this pile my star seeds may ha also have chosen this pile you guys may really resonate with any sort of divination or different forms of divination um you know candle wax readings um like hydromancy um tarot readings uh some of you guys may even really resonate with like past life regressions or almost like hip hypnotic type energies coming through here you may really I'm, I'm just really feeling like this trance state, like being in a different state, a different mental state, almost existing in a different realm while you channel messages. Wow. And very strong third eye energy, very strong third eye energy coming through here where I can like almost feel physically my third eye. So some of you guys may really resonate with like the messages that you give may come through your physical body as well. You may like, you know, if you're, if you're feeling a, a message of love, you may really feel those messages come through in your heart or through your heart space. Um, if you're feeling, you know, mess messages come through, they may come through like physically feeling sweaty or like I don't know where it just almost alters your physical state of being interesting some of you guys may be very skilled at reading like crystal balls or tassiomancy like the the reading of tea leaves but my readers definitely my readers for group number three um very almost Aquarius energy coming through here and this doesn't mean you know you have to be an Aquarius but um Aquarian energy is always kind of like that energy that's kind of like out of this world like <clears throat> it's even the represented by the star card in the tarot interesting let's pull some tarot cards and go a little deeper into this group number three And see what your guides want to talk to you about in regards to your strengths and psychic abilities. We have transformation. The elemental of earth. I feel like with this transformation, what I'm really getting here is that you guys are going through a major shift in either your reading style or what it is that you're reading um, or the kinds of messages that you're reading. So for some of you guys, maybe you've strictly just done like love readings and now you are being led to
reading like mediumship readings or maybe even zodiac readings or something like that and for some of you guys you're making this shift into making this um a career or almost like a, a job for you um maybe doing offering personal readings um or starting some sort of metaphysical shop or spiritual based business is here strongly we also have the ace of fire coming through here yeah so new job new career um new resources new ideas new passions new interests coming through here and it's really transforming the way that you read whatever it is that you read, because I feel like for group number three, there's a lot of different types of readers here. Um, or you may excel in multiple different styles of reading, whether it be doing tarot and tassiomancy or astrology or, you know, any combination of any of those things together for some of you guys. What you're reading and or the style of reading that you do is transforming and shifting into something that you're going to, I feel like, create a business around in some way, shape, or form, group number three, or you're being led to do that. Interesting. Some of you guys, too, this may be kind of, um, in a sense, you may be awakening to a soul purpose or a soul mission. Uh, so definitely make sure you check out the collaboration video in regards to your current spiritual awakening because for some of you guys that may be what's happening here is some sort of soul purpose um, or life purpose is being activated or awakened here for you guys. Wow. We have the Nine of Air coming through. So whatever this is for you guys, it feels like a risk and it feels like there's some fear surrounding it. Like, um, there's a fear of taking this risk, a fear of taking this leap of faith. And you're being asked to trust, to trust your abilities, to trust your intuition, to trust the path, to trust your your passion to trust the messages that you're receiving. Some of you guys may be going through a transformation within your craft, within your reading style in a way that's creating a lot of doubt surrounding maybe how accurate it is or whether or not it's resonating. And your guides are coming through here saying, trust, take this leap of faith. Trust yourself, trust your abilities, trust spirit. We also have the nine of fire. Mm. There's a lot of like Pluto energy here coming through um so big change and change can be scary you know but that doesn't mean it's bad so your guides want you to know that there's a need to kind of trust the change in your spiritual abilities that are happening right now they are being strengthened um and there are new ones being activated i feel especially in any form of divination um, so follow those interests and follow those studies that you've been doing, group number three, and allow that to kind of evolve in the way that it's trying to. I just feel for a lot of you guys that it's creating a lot of doubt surrounding your, your accuracy or your ability to read or if you're doing it right or however that might be coming through for you, um... 
But it's like your guides are coming through here saying just because it's changing doesn't mean that it's bad or that it's wrong or that you're wrong or that it's a negative thing. So you guys may have some sort of perception attached to change very subconsciously that makes you lean towards change being a negative thing. That your guides are wanting to kind of like ease your mind in regards to. And we also have the three of air coming out. And look at her looking into the crystal ball. Right? Some of you guys definitely... I feel like some of you guys definitely lean towards... Um, love readings being very prominent here and that may have been how you started through divination but what I'm really feeling now interesting um so that could be for some of you but for others of you I feel like heartbreak is what led you to divination like some of you guys um well really all of you group number three all of you guys um it may have happened a little bit differently for everybody here because this is a general reading. So apply it how it resonates. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't for who it's meant for. But there is kind of this energy here of being led towards divination due to matters, matters of the heart. And I feel for a lot of you guys, these matters of the heart had to do with heartbreak, had to do with grief or loss or separation in some way, shape or form. And for a lot of you guys, I feel like a big part of your purpose here is to help heal the heart of others. Um, through divination. Interesting. I love that. So let's pull a couple more cards here to take a look at where your guides want you to focus in regards to these abilities, these strengths, and these psychic abilities for group number three. And what I'm hearing here is, is teaching people how to change their heart. Um, so oftentimes, we can be so desperate for love, for attention, for validation, for acceptance that we find ourselves in situations that are unhealthy, that are toxic, that are traumatic for some of us, that leave us heartbroken. And I feel like group number three, a big part of your mission on this planet is to help teach people how to heal in a way that's that allows them to love interesting i hope that made sense um so i don't know i don't know what's going on with you group number three but i do feel like this change and this transformation um that is occurring within like your psychic abilities and your ability to divine and channel messages um, is also being reflected in your heart space and, and the way or the ability that you have to love and to move from love. And this could definitely be in a romantic relationship, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. This is just, I feel like you guys are very heart-based. Um, interesting. We have the solar plexus chakra with personal boundaries, choice, assertiveness, empowerment, and authenticity. So what, I, what I'm hearing here is not only 
are you being empowered here? And are you kind of finding a more authentic way to utilize your abilities and your strengths? But there's also this essence of like teaching other people how to love based on what's more authentic for them instead of choosing the very first thing. That... So there's a message here for somebody maybe not to take the first option that's presented to you out of this need um, or out of fear of lack rather, especially with this nine of air here. So some of you guys, there may be like multiple options being presented to you and you may be very tempted to choose one very rapidly or to choose the first thing that comes along out of this idea that something's better than nothing. And I feel like you guys are kind of evolving into this version of yourself that realizes that you have the ability to say no. this healing of like this need for attention or this need for acceptance is happening for you group number three it's very empowering for you and I feel like you're going to be teaching others how to do this how to choose love instead of choosing attention I hope that makes sense because just because somebody's giving us attention doesn't mean that it's love, right? Um, although the attention may feel good. That doesn't mean that it's going to turn into what we want it to turn into. Interesting. We also have action with the root chakra. Movement, perseverance, discipline, and motivation. Um, and this discipline is really leading me to like this choice as well, like having the ability to say no and really having the willpower to say no. Um, I feel is something that's very significant for group number three, as well as with this movement, this, this need to take this risk, to take this leap of faith into whatever this is for you. For some of you guys, it's maybe moving into some sort of connection or relationship that may scare you. Um, for others of you, I feel like most of you, it may have to do with moving into utilizing your abilities in a kind of like a business-based fashion, opening yourself up for personal readings or... Yeah, that's really, really what I'm feeling here. Group number three is opening yourself up for like personal readings um, to utilize your gifts, your abilities within your community, within this reality, but also like maintaining these boundaries and not allowing others to take your energy or to expect your energy for free so group number three you guys are definitely going through a transformation and an evolution of your abilities and this may be causing like your style of reading um or even the topics of your readings to be changing um but your guides are saying absolutely follow this don't doubt it because I feel like a lot of you guys are getting caught up in doubting that this is where you're meant to go or um, maybe even feeling like you're losing your abilities um, and you're not. They're just evolving. Group number three, okay? So this is what I'm getting from a beautiful group number three. I'm going to go ahead and leave this reading here for you. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know what other readings you guys would like to see. Consider subscribing if you feel called to do so. And remember to go check out uh, Esha's reading about your current spiritual awakening over at Through Alchemy Tarot. 
I thank you guys so very much for joining me here today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.